everybody, this is how to calculate the vase with, calc uh, with calculus. So um, we have a vase that was presented to us and we took some measurements. As you can see, we've drawn some measurements on this like uh, picture vase. And the first step in calculating this is that we need to break down these uh, parts into different functions so we can find the volume of that certain function. Now, what a lot of groups did was that they, they decided to break down this vase into multiple different quadratic functions, like right here and right here and right here and right here. The problem with doing this is that it's extremely hard to find a quadratic regression line for each of these curves. There are two reasons why this is hard. The first reason is that... Um, is that if you want to find a quad, like a, an accurate quadratic regression line, you have to calculate so many points on this line, and that's just really, really hard to do. The second reason why a quadratic regression line isn't very good in this situation is because this line isn't even a quadratic function. You can notice that in this place, instead of being like a like a smooth like quadratic line, really what it does is it's kind of like a really straight line, and then it suddenly juts forward like that. Same with here. You can see it's it's, a, it's kind of straight, and then juts forward, and then juts forward again. So a quadratic regression line doesn't actually um, make this base any more accurate. Instead, what you want to do, and what we did, which I feel like is a more accurate way, is that we want to break down this vase into even smaller parts, into the parts where uh, it kind of juts. So um, in the vase in real life, it kind of goes like a little small curve, and then a uh, really big change, and then another curve, and then another curve. So uh, we linearize these curves, and then we solve it easier like that. It's so much more simple. I think it's also more accurate because this thing isn't even a quadratic function. And um, that's pretty much what we did. So we broke this down into seven parts. You can notice that the first part right here is the half of this uh, this place, which is just this part. Uh, we calculate that area as like a little um, with the like the disc thing. And then same with this one. This is the second part. We calculate it out with the disc. We rotate around, uh, rotate around the x-axis again, rotate around the x-axis again, rotate around the x-axis again, and then rotate, rotate. Uh, in total, we have seven parts that we will break this down. And um, it becomes easy, really easy after that. All we do is we find this line, this equation right here, uh, a good linear function that can represent this. And then we just spin around the x-axis and integrate that. All right, the next part is that we're going to calculate part one which if we notice up here is this main area in this really, really top region. Um, every single part is going to be the same since we always linearize it and do the exact same uh, pretty much thing and then we spin around the x-axis. So we're just going to use part one as an example and just apply this to every single other step. So you can see that notice in the first part we have uh, this height, which is calculated from here. Uh, we have the radius on top and the radius on the, um, on the bottom, which we can reflect over here. You can see there's 114 millimeters on top. 104 millimeters on the bottom and uh, the entire height is 14.625 millimeters so if we put this on a you know on a graph you can notice that the radius would be half of this the radius of this would be half of this and uh, the top would start at 14.625 since that's the height and the bottom would start at zero from this we can calculate the slope and the function of this line right here if you can imagine we drag this entire way over here this is a line with a slope of 2.9 uh, Two five, and uh, you know you can look at this through the x through y and x relationships, and we can notice that x equals one over two point two five y plus fifty two. The reason why we want to flip it from uh, you know an x function to a y function is because when we look at the area and the radius of this uh, you know entire thing, when we look at one disk in the area, um, what you'll notice is that the radius is not y, but the radius is the x. So, you, you know, when you put out a radius right here, it's the length of x, not the length of y. That's why we want uh, the radius to be x right here, and we set it as a y, function of y. So you can notice that uh, the area of one certain disk right here is going to be pi times this function squared, since that's going to be the radius. And in order to find all the areas of everything between 0 and 14, all we do is just integrate it. And then we integrate it, and then we integrate it, and you can see that the number will come out as one three six five six seven point two uh, millimeters cubed. Uh, we can also double check this by looking at the range of the numbers that are available. If we take the cylinder of just the top part and the, just the bottom part, we'll notice that the cylinder equation is really easy. It's just the rate. Uh, it's the base times the height. So fifty seven squared pi times this, fifty two squared pi times this, and you'll notice that yeah. Our number is, in fact, in our range of possible numbers, which means that our number is going to be pretty accurate. 
Again, we apply this exact same method to every single um, every single part, and then what we're gonna do is just add them up at the end. You can see part one, then part two, part three, part four, part five, part six, part seven. You add all of them up, and our entire total volume that we estimated is three, two, four, six, two, seven, two. Okay, let me repeat that again. <laughs> three, two, four, two, seven, five point one millimeters cubed. 